Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm talking to you about some of the accusations that narcissists will use um, towards you and how to tell if you're trauma bonded uh, to the narcissist based on your response. So uh, I was thinking about doing this video because I was submitted a question to me um, in my email about you know, why does my narcissist husband accuse me of um, wanting to leave him even though I don't want to leave him and I would never leave him? And um, I responded back to her and I asked her how she knew her husband was a narcissist. And she uh, gave me some examples and he certainly has narcissistic traits. So, um, so I said, why don't you want to leave him? And... Um, they don't have children, and um, and so the divorce process really wouldn't be t too difficult. Um, but long story short, she's afraid, and she doesn't believe in divorce. And uh, basically, there's there is like five other reasons. So, okay, she's staying with the guy. Here's why the narcissist will use accusations um, in in part of their abuse towards you because. Because number one, as I've talked about before, narcissists know what they're doing. This is a craft that they are perfecting every day. Um, and part of this is understanding reverse psychology. It works very well, especially for people who are already prone to be codependent or to be drawn into some sort of abusive relationship. For those people, the accusations actually work as a motivator to prove to the person making the accusations that they're not doing the things that they're being accused of. There's a lot of people who aren't even in a narcissistic relationship necessarily, but they can't stand the thought of somebody thinking some kind of thing about them that isn't true. And so therefore they feel the need to justify themselves. And so they go to great lengths to do this when if you would have just behaved however you normally would behave, the truth would eventually come out. Like people will eventually be able to see who's telling the truth, where the lies lie, and what to make of that situation. They'll make their own decision. They can judge it for themselves. They don't need you running around trying to correct uh, their opinions. But with a narcissist, the narcissist knows that you're going to be programmed to want to have his or her approval. In this case, this woman is dealing with her husband and she, she, know, she needs to feel his approval in order to have her own self validated. This is the problem with codependency and the trauma bond as part of being in a narcissistic relationship of any kind, by the way. This one happens to be a romantic relationship, but it doesn't matter. This can happen with a narcissistic boss where you find yourself going to extreme lengths to get his or her approval. You'll stay late, you'll do whatever. Even when the the boss is changing their mind about the things that they want and the timeline they want them on and all this type of stuff, even if they're taking credit for your work and all kinds of things could be happening real abuse of their power and your time happening, you're programmed to want to have their approval and it's not good enough. So even if you, you do the standard of the project, right, you meet the standards of what your, your boss had asked for, your own standard is actually, does my boss think I'm good enough? You know, did he or she give me uh, praise for this project. So you've actually set your own standard to see in this situation. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual job that you're hired to do and the requirements of that position. You, you've you made his or her, your boss's approval, your the standard. <laughs> and this is what's happening with this woman um, who wrote to me with her husband she actually doesn't care if like she's actually fulfilled um to her standards the the rules of what it looks like to try uh to make your marriage work to her that isn't that those are not the standards to her so sorry i got a new watch and i sometimes forget to turn this on silent so to her, she um, she thinks that the standards are in her husband's mind. So his opinion of her 
is the the weight for all of her works that she does as a wife and that's the standard that's the measurement the problem is that narcissists will know this and they will constantly be changing their um their standards so if if one week for example the standard is um you know have the house cleaned and have dinner ready when i'm done with work that won't be the standard next week and by the way you could meet that standard but there's all of these other little things like no it wasn't clean to my liking or no the the food wasn't what i wanted to eat it, there's going to be always some kind of thing where it's like you're never going to be good enough because the narcissist is the one who's going to be setting the standards and changing them all of the time and you're not a mind reader and it's it's literally a, a cycle of failure that you're you're involved in the only way to break this cycle which i've talked about before is to get get out of it stop asking yourself why you're going crazy when you're the one on the merry-go-round get off of the ride like this is leading nowhere uh so narcissists use accusations kind of bringing it back to to the original topic here to control to manipulate and to strengthen the trauma bond the further dependent you are upon the narcissist for your uh self-worth your approval your identity all of the things that you need as an individual um the more you farm out that responsibility to somebody else and you give the power into somebody else's hands, the more tightly that person controls you, the possibilities for your future, your destiny, your friends, and all of the things that go along with you. Your finances, when y your time, when you go to sleep, when you wake up, how much stuff you do during the day, whether or not this stuff brings you fulfillment. And it's like you're chasing something that is never attainable. And this is the real issue with the trauma bond. And I've tried to describe this in depth many times on this channel. The trauma bond is, an, is it literally an addiction to your own chemicals, your own hormones, your own chemistry in your body. And it is no different than any other type of addiction. You need to break the addiction. You need to allow your body to get back into its natural, uh, normal levels of all of its hormones. You need to flush everything out of it. And you need to start learning healthy ways of thinking. Because your thoughts are what drove you into this position anyway. Your behaviors follow your thoughts. Your patterns of behavior, the things that you call habits, are following those. So you, you, this is a lifestyle that you have to change. This isn't this person, which is why I have often said you're going to attract the same spirit in a different body if you don't actually get healed from narcissistic abuse because it isn't the narcissist. The narcissist is an indicator of something within yourself that is missing, that needs to get fed, that needs attention, that you've neglected. The narcissist is that indicator. Just because you leave one narcissist doesn't mean that the next time that you find a job or the next time that you get in a relationship or get married or whatever, that that person is going to be healthy. You are, are allowing, there is a space that you are asking a narcissist to fill when you don't have the, the self-esteem or the self-worth or the self-love um, that is necessary for you to be a whole person. Real quickly, um, another reason that the narcissist will use accusations um, so preval prevalently is because um, accusations also force you to get into a cycle of self self doubt. And if you don't already have that, like so, if you came to the nar narcissistic relationship without doubting yourself, with being very in tune with your um, intuition and and trusting your gut instincts and that kind of thing then self-doubt needs to be planted. It needs to st start m making its way into your life and accusations will do that. Because if you're a particularly self-reflective or you know just a self-aware person, you're gonna think about the things that the person that you're with or your boss or your close friend or your mom or your dad or whoever the narcissist in your life might be, you're gonna think about the things that they're saying and really take them to heart. Like, oh, do I really do that? I might really be doing that. So now every time you try to set a boundary, every time you try to stick up for yourself, every time you try to, 
uh, uh, bring something up that has bothered you, the accusation is always going to be like you're selfish, you're making it up, you're overreacting, you're exaggerating, whatever. And that starts the, the cycle of self-doubt. It teaches you your voice doesn't matter. It's better if you're quiet. Nothing you say matters. This person is not going to change no matter what you say or no matter how many times you say it or the way that you word it. It's not going to change. And it starts to erode your self-worth. So accusations serve, um, serve a lot of purposes when you're dealing with a narcissist. It's not just that this is uh, a one-time thing of like being able to keep you doing the things that the narcissist wants you to do. It's literally strengthening the addiction that you have to the narcissist so that you depend more and more and more on the narcissist to tell you what true north is. You know, you depend on the narcissist to tell you when you're right, when you're wrong, uh, what you should do with your time, what kind of friends you should make, where you should spend your money. Literally, your whole life will start hinging upon the narcissist, what they want and what they approve of. And again, this all goes back to the trauma bond because along with this, the narcissist knows that it can't always be the stick, right? Sometimes there has to be a carrot. And so this trauma bond involves the love bombing phase. And so when the narcissist does give you even a little bit of attention or love, uh, and I hate to say it that way because it's actually not, it's part of manipulation, um, you're going to start to feel like, see, this is what I've been waiting for. I knew that this person really loved me. I knew that this person could change. And you're going to start waiting for those very few and far in between moments instead of taking a look at the majority of who this person is most of the time, uh, which is obviously who they really are. They're using affection as manipulation, as a form of control, as a form of coercion even. So um, so I hope this video explains to you why narcissists use accusations, the power of them, and kind of how to judge where you are on this scale. You know, there's probably a trauma bond. If you're dealing with a narcissist of some kind, there's probably a trauma bond. How deeply you are, um, you are in that trauma bond is going to be dependent upon each each person individually because there's a lot of other factors that go into it it's not just about time it's not just about time i have a video where I, that i did on stockholm syndrome which is what we used to call trauma bond and 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 talking about where this first got its its name and that story you know this can happen very quickly in a matter of hours so this isn't something like if you haven't been with a narcissist for over a year you're not trauma bonded this can happen within a matter of um hours so i hope that this has kind of given you a a, a guideline of where you might fall on the on the scale right now and some ways to move forward if you're ready for that and when you're ready to do that and if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel below and then click on the little bell so that you're notified whenever i upload a new video to this channel